All right, grace and peace replay viewer. This is uh, the first of the book reviews that I'll be doing. Let me set this camera up. Uh, it's not going to be long, right? It's going to be about 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes. We're going to talk about the book in 10 minutes and then just, you know, uh, the first couple of chapters. Hopefully get your appetite wet for reading the book, right? And, you know, we'll go from there. So we're going to let some people join in. Uh, this is a Periscope. I'm going to be placing this on my uh, YouTube account with the comments and everything. So uh, you'll be able to see the comments as they as they come up. What's going on? Grace and peace to you, brother. Uh, as they're scrolling up, you'll see the comments on my YouTube video as well. Uh, so let's... Uh, we got four people in here, and that's probably as many as I'm going to get. I don't get a lot of people on my scopes. It, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel by... Uh, yes, you can subscribe to it by going to my per Periscope profile and clicking the subscribe link. I actually put the subscribe link in my uh, Periscope profile. So, right, if you can, invite followers. Welcome. What's up, Pete? What's going on, Brian? What's happening, everybody? Yes, thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. All right, so we're going to get into yeah, man. I've been on I've been on YouTube for a while. I just don't post much, right? All right, so today's book that we're going to review we're going to review the first two chapters, the preface in the first two chapters uh, is the attributes of God by Pink. Now you're probably wondering first off, why is there this stuff? What's that? Right? What's all of that on there? That's uh, duct tape. Because there was a picture of, quote unquote, Jesus on there. And I believe that that's a second commandment violation. So I taped over it. Right? I did it on the back too. Because there was a picture of, quote unquote, God. Like with the flowing white hair and the old man stuff. Right? So don't give me the, you know, the, the second commandment violation. No images. Right? No images. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So I taped over that joint. But I bought this before I believed, before I understood that. Um, <clears throat> so... I was like, I ain't going to throw the book away, so I'll just cover up the image, right? Okay, so, but the book is really helpful. It's, it's not very long, right? It's not, a, it's not a long book. It's, what, 99 pages? Yeah, I read this in like a weekend uh, a couple of years ago. It was really helpful. Um, and I'm going to read a couple of quotes from it. Hopefully, it'll get your appetite wet to read it, those of you who haven't read it. I know there's some people who don't, you know, who don't really particularly like Pink because of his issues with the local church. Yes, right? <laughs> yeah, man, if you watch enough of my scopes, you're going to see this shirt reappear, right? Because I have, like, about 10 T-shirts that I work at home, and I just kind of, <laughs> and I just kind of recycle them. That's all I do, right? Um so, The Attributes of God by Arthur Pink, all right? So, in the preface, there's a couple of really good quotes in the preface. Uh, and this is kind of, I learned from my brother Brian. I'll show you what I do. Um, you know, I actually, um, <clears throat> you know, I underline and highlight stuff. And I'll show you as I'm going through it what I do, what I learned from Brian in some of his reading comprehension videos uh, as well. So, uh, but in the preface, Pink says this, The foundation of all true knowledge of God must be a clear mental apprehension of his perfections as revealed in Holy Scripture. An unknown God can neither be trusted, served, nor worshipped. So that's why the importance of, of studying the attribute, that's the importance of studying the attributes of God. You can't trust a God that you don't know, right? If you don't know God, if you don't understand his perfections, if you don't understand his attributes, you can be, you'll be worshipping God incorrectly. Yeah? I mean, he starts off right in the preface, man. Like, it's like right off the bat. Um, so how can you trust a God whom you do not know? How can you worship a God properly who you do not know? And this, yeah, Candace, it's like 99 cent on, on, um, if you're a Kindle reader, it's 99 cent on Amazon, right? I mean, it's really, it's that cheap. I have it on both. I think it might even be free. I'm not sure. It might be 99 cent or free. I can't remember which one. One of them was not, sovereignty of God was 99 cent. I think attributes of God was free. But it may not be now. Don't quote me on that. <clears throat> yeah, I need to check that out. Let me let me take a picture of that. I'm going to take a picture of it. Boom. All right. So there you go. See? Right there. 99 cent. Right? Okay. So he goes in. Right? To start off. And then in the preface, I also highlighted this other quote. 
Uh, God is only truly known in the soul as we yield ourselves to him, submit to his authority, and regulate all the details of our lives by his holy precepts and commandments. That's the only time that God is truly known. And I, I say a hearty amen to that, right? That's what believers are wanting as we're growing every day. We want to know more of what God has said. Uh, of, you know, We want to regulate our lives according to the details that are found in his word um, so that we can know him rightly. He's taken the time to reveal himself to us through the creation, through our conscience, and through the written and living word, right? So we know through Jesus Christ, and we know Jesus Christ through the written word. The living word, we, uh, we learn through the written word. So the, the Bible should be where we're going to find out about this God who we worship. Yes, yes, glowing, knowing and understanding him. That's it, right there. That's it. That's it. <clears throat> Has a free PD. There you go. I think Chapel might have that, and so does some monergism might have it. Yeah. <laughs> who, who asked you to rock pink, right? <laughs> who rock pink? Yeah. So, all right, so this, the, the, the first chapter is the solitariness of God, right? Uh, and actually what I had done was in my notes, I had actually, um, I had actually, what is it, solitariness? I had actually gone through and, and done it and gotten a definition of it, a one that I liked. Uh, I think it was from dictionary.com. Yeah, yeah. Alone without companions unattended right so god is alone and without companion right he even says that in the word there is no other there's no other god I, I don't know one right and if he don't if he doesn't know another god right i know not one right if he doesn't know the god then it, the god doesn't exist <clears throat> all right so <laughs> so first thing i highlighted here yeah yeah that's <laughs> it's awesome god is solitary in his excellency and, and this is from uh, Exodus fifteen eleven. Who is li like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Right? There is no other God like our God. Right? He is set apart. He is, he is solitary, alone, okay, without companions, no peers. He has no peers. Right? So that's, that's, that's a part of the solitariness of God. Um, Pink goes on here. He said, during... A past eternity, God was alone. <clears throat> right, all little G's, exactly. <clears throat> Self-contained, sufficient, self-satisfied, in need of nothing. Yes, peerless and unrivaled, right. Had a universe, had angels, had human beings been necessary to him in any way, they also had been, uh, they, <clears throat> sorry, they also had been called into existence from all eternity. <clears throat> the creating of them, when he did, added nothing to God, Essentially, he changes not, Malachi 3.6. Therefore, his essential glory can neither be augmented nor diminished. Right? He's in need of nothing. The, he, need of nothing. The creation, none of these things. God is not in need of anything. So when you hear people say stuff like, you know, God was so lonely that he created man. Right? No. Like, I heard that a lot in sermons. Right? I heard that a lot. But no, that's not the case. That's not the God we worship. That's not the God of Scripture. The God of Scripture is in need of nothing, right? Not so, exactly. Not so. Um, we see here, God was under no constraint, no obligation, no necessity to create. That he chose to do so was purely a sovereign act of, yeah, impassibility, <laughs> uh, act on his, on his part. <laughs> Don't get me in trouble, uh, Vishal. Caused by nothing outside himself, determined by nothing but his own mere good pleasure. And then he, he quotes uh, Ephesians 1.11. And, then, and this is the, the, the reason I wrote right here in the margins, the reason for creating, right? And it says there, that he did create was simply for his manifestive glory, right? That's the reason why he did it, for his manifestive glory. Manifestative glory, sorry, manifestative glory. Yeah, that's why he did. This is the reason why God created, right? God is not the gainer. He even says it. God is no gainer even from our worship, right? Our worship adds nothing to God. It is due him. It is due to him. You want me to look up Isaiah 47, 47, 3. 47, 3. That's why I like this internet, yeah. 
Ooh, what does that say here? All right. Your nakedness shall be uncovered and your grace, this grace shall be seen. I will take vengeance and spare no one. All right. 43, seven. Yeah. I was like, whoa, that one, that's a hard hitting verse, but I don't know if that was the one. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Yes. It's all created for his glory. Amen. Amen to that. Yeah. All right. And then uh, Pete goes into this section right here. And I wrote this. Our obedience profits nothing to God. Right. Discourses on the existence and attributes of God. Who is that by, Chris? Stephen. Cr oh, OK. OK. Stephen Carnock. All right. I will check that out. And I'll be posting this to YouTube uh, shortly after this. I want to download it and then. Actually, no, I'm not going to download it. I'm just going to. I'm going to post it up there. Um, so, yeah, our obedience doesn't even add anything to God. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, and then he says here, it is perfectly true that God is both honored and dishonored by men, not in his essential being, but in his official character. So we, we violate the official character of God when we, uh, we don't change anything in his essential being when we honor or dishonor him. But not as in that. Well, yeah, this is a booklet. Yeah. Pink, I don't think Pink was trying to be as in depth. And then I'm trying to, I'm, I want to do small books when I'm doing this, uh, what I'm reading Wednesday. So that's, that's kind of what this is about. What I'm reading Wednesday, I'm going to try to do smaller books to try to give people an idea of, of good literature that they can read <clears throat> and get started, um, get started with and jump to the big stuff, right? Because this is good for, you know, just to start off. This was excellent for me as a, as a new Christian, not getting too deep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's mainly for people that are like, you know, you know, coming up like I came up. I've only been a Christian for like four years now. Right. And these books were formative for me. Right. Now I'm, I'm now I'm getting to heavier stuff. But at the beginning, stuff like this was was critical for me. So um, let's see. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. No, it is. It's really good. Let's see. I want to I want to kind of make this. So let's see. Gosh. All right. And he says here, um, let me read. I want to read this and then read. Um, what was I? Well, I was a nominal believer. I was a nominal believer. I was I was just living for myself, uh, you know, believing that the grace of God had saved me as a seven year old. But I was sinning. I was only focused on my own, you know, my own self, my own desires, um, following after everything that I wanted. Nothing, you know, not honoring God in anything that I did. Right. It wasn't until that, you know, God brought me to repentance and faith uh, by showing me um, how the depth of, you know, the deprav of my own depravity and my own sin and that he was just to punish it and that he was going to punish it lest I repented. Right. And put my trust in Christ for for the propitiation for those sins. Um, so, yeah, I want to read. Yeah. Yeah. No joke. Yeah. So let me let me read this. I want to read this paragraph and then we'll move on to the decrees. All right. So nor is God known by the intellect. OK, so let me read this. That leads into it. The God of Scripture can only be known by those to whom he makes himself known. Right. God has to condescend. We can't understand God. We can't like not not as as creatures. Um, we can't understand God lest he condescends and makes himself known to us. OK. Uh, who, who had somebody had a really good illustration? Yeah, only in how he reveals um, that a, a, a savage could pick up a watch and he could look at the watch. Right. Yeah. And we could look, he could look at the watch and he could, you know, kind of figure out some stuff about, you know, the watch and maybe maybe some things about the watch, the, the watch's owner or the watchmaker. But he can't get a full revelation of the of that picture of, of the watchmaker from just the watch. The watchmaker has to reveal more about himself to the savage, right? Who's never seen a watch or anything like that. I forget who it was that had that illustration. I just heard it recently, but I can't remember. Yeah, <clears throat> I can't remember that one. But let me. I'm gonna read. Continue reading this paragraph. Nor is God known by the intellect. God is spirit, right? John 4:24, and therefore can only be known spiritually. But fallen man is not spiritual. He is carnal. He is dead to all that is spiritual. Unless he is born again, <laughs> supernaturally brought from death unto life, miraculously translated out of the darkness into light, he cannot even see the things of God. John 3.3. 3. Still less apprehend him. 1 Corinthians 2.14. Right? The 
Yeah, the natural man can't understand the things of God. The Holy Spirit has to shine in our hearts, not intellects, in order to give us the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. And even that spiritual knowledge is but fragmentary. The regenerated soul has to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Peter 3, 18. One of the things I love about Pink's books is that they're chock full of scripture. Yes, exactly. 1 Corinthians 2, 14. One of, that was one of the things that really drew me to Pink's writing was because on every page, scripture after scripture reference after scripture reference after scripture reference. And for me, that was like, okay, let me go here and look at this. Let me go here and look at this. Let me go here and look at this, right? And see what it's saying. Um, that was helpful. Writing like that, that was one of the reasons why I liked Wayne Grudem's <laughs> was a bad book, right? I don't know. That was one of the reasons why I like Grudem's Systematic, right? It was the first Systematic I ever read. It was because there was it was a bunch of scripture references on every page. And as a form, as as someone who's in the formative stages of understanding these things, I wanted to go back to the Bible and see what it was teaching. So going back to the Bible to see what it was teaching. Thoughts on double precept? I'm not talking about that right now. Stay on topic. Freaking me out. There you go. Yeah, to the cut, right? <laughs> yeah. So the next, next we start off with the decrees of God, right? So it's another thing I do, you know, in the margins right there, definition of decree, right? This is what, this is Pink's definition of decree. So I'll put that there. The another thing that I think Brian does or that other people do that I've seen is that when there's a definition, they highlight it in a different color. Um, huggies or pampers. We all, we straight up huggies in this house, son. Um, and then they'll put like in the front page, they'll put, um, you know, here, they'll put a list of definitions and I'm going to, I'm going to do that for this book as well. Yes. Yeah. I, I covered up the second commandment violation. Yeah. I, I can't deal with those. Yeah. So let me go a little, a little quick through the decrees real quick. All right. So the definition of decree, this is what this is Pink's definition of, de of decree. All right. The decree of God is his purpose or determination with respect to future things. We have used a singular number as scripture does. Romans 8, 28, Ephesians 3, 11, because there was only one act of his infinite mind about future things. But we speak as if there had been many because our minds are only capable of thinking of successive successive revolutions as thoughts and occasions arise or in reference to the various objects of his decree, which being many seem to us to require a distinct purpose for each one. But an infinite understanding does not proceed by steps from one stage to another. And then he quotes Acts 15, 18, known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Okay. Yeah. So we see here, and then the scriptures talk about this all the time in the language that it uses. It uses the word decree. It uses the word eternal purpose. Determinate counsel and foreknowledge, uh, his will, his good pleasure. Okay, so they're called his counsel. Uh, you know, and it, there's a lot of good things that you can be that can be said about this, right? Because this is where we place our hope and trust. Because we don't worship a God who's just out there, maybe possibly handling things, you know, and just pulling strings and reacting to man, right? We know we have a sure. Uh, foundation because the God whom we serve has decreed like Romans 8 28 he's decreed all good things uh, every everything works out for good for them who are called according to God's prayer yeah Chris I might block Chris no that's retaliation <laughs> Chris blocked me on his last scope so <clears throat> but listen to this paragraph the decrees of God relate to all future things without exception whatever is done in time was foreordained before time began. God's purpose was concerned with everything, whether great or small, whether good or evil, although with reference to the latter, we must be careful to state that while God is the orderer and controller of sin, he is not the author of it in the same way that he is the author of good. Sin could not proceed from a holy God by positive and direct creation, but only by decretive permission and negative action. And Jack may be able to, to, uh, to speak on this a little bit philosophically. I'd love to hear your thoughts, Jack. But only by decretive permission and ne negative action. God's decree is as comprehensive as his government. Extending to all creatures and all events, it was concerned about our life and death, about 
our state in time and our state in eternity. And it's a cheap book. Go pick it up. 99 cent, I think, on, on Kindle um, isn't even a thing. Just the absence. There you go. See, the absence of good, right? Yeah. Nice. I got a couple of philosophy books coming. Um, I don't know if you've heard of um, Vern Poitras's Redeeming Philosophy. I have that one coming. I don't know if you've read that one or you're familiar with that one, Jack. Um, you can create any more than a hole in a donut. <laughs> okay, nice. I love donut holes, though. Why do they call them donut holes? They're the filling, the, the donut fillings from that. Okay, anyway. Uh, but they're they're cool. I love them. All right, so here's some 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 attributes of of God's decree, and then we'll stop we'll stop right there. First, His decree is eternal. Okay, to suppose any of them uh, suppose any of them to be made in time is to suppose that some new occasion has occurred, some more unforeseen event or combination of circumstances has arisen, which has induced the Most High to form a new resolution. So right, that would that would lead to logically right to to heresy because god would be see yeah it's free see there you go it is free right logically lead to god having limited knowledge and that's that's a heresy right because god is all-knowing right omniscience that would deny omniscience second the creed the decrees of god are wise right wisdom is shown in the selection of the best possible ends and of the fittest means of accomplishing them all right so god's decree is god's decree is wise and he, he quotes psalm 104 uh, 24. O Lord, how manifold are thy works. In wisdom thou hast made them all. All of his works. Everything. Okay. Um, so third, his his decree is free. Okay. So who he, he just he goes straight into quoting uh, scripture. Who hath directed the spirit of the Lord, or being his counselor, hath taught him? With whom he took with whom he took counsel, and who instructed him and taught him in the path of judgment? and taught him knowledge, and showed to him the way of understanding. That's Isaiah 40, 13 and 14. Okay, God was alone when he made his decrees. Remember the solitariness of God. And his determinations were influenced by no external cause. He was free to decree or not to decree, and to decree one thing and not another. So that's the liberty that God has, it has to be ascribed, ascribed to God, right? Because he's, remember, he's solitary. He's needing nothing. He was free in making, in, in, uh, in, in decreeing all things. Fourth, they are absolute and unconditional, right? So he's decreed everything. He says here, in every instance where God is, has decreed an end, yeah, there it is. <laughs> he has also decreed every means to that end. The one who decreed the salvation of his elect also decreed the work to work faith in them. Second Thessalonians 2.13. He also decreed to work the faith in them, right? I've decreed this. I've decreed that the redemption price uh, to be paid by my son. I've decreed to work faith in them. I've decreed to sanctify them through, uh, and I've decreed to glorify them. All the means, right? It wasn't just I've decreed the salvation. I've decreed every means by which it was to happen. The death of the son is one of the, um, one of the greatest examples of this, right? The, they, he was delivered up to, according to the definite um, the, uh, plan and foreknowledge of God. Okay, he was killed by the hands of lawless men, though. Yeah, and by my catechism instead. Yes, by Chris's catechism. Okay, uh, and then uh, the, he has a good little section here on sovereignty and responsibility. I'll let you all read that one yourself, right? Since the book is free, read that one, that, that paragraph right there. Um, and then he quotes Jonathan Edwards here saying, Whether God has decreed all things that ever come, to pass or not, all that own the being of God, own that he knows all things beforehand. Now, it is self-evident that if he knows all things beforehand, he either doth approve of them or doth not approve of them. That is, he either is willing they should be, or he is willing not willing they should be. But to will that they should be is to decree them. And that's from Jonathan Edwards, right? Um, yeah. So and then without the decrees, he goes into what to assume and then contemplate the opposite. He asks us to contemplate the opposite of a, of a world that wasn't decreed by God. And he says to deny the divine decrees would be to predicate a world and all its concerns regulated by undesigned chance or blind faith. Basically, he says that would, there would be nothing better than the black darkness and abject horror of atheism. 
All right, so Pink was throwing it out there too. Okay, yeah. Okay, and then he finishes up. Oh, my reader, how thankful, doxology, how thankful should, uh, should we be that everything is determined by infinite wisdom and goodness. What praise and gratitude are due unto God for his divine decrees. It is because of them that we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. We may, uh, well, may we exclaim, and this is Romans eleven thirty six, for him, for of him and through him and to him are all things to whom he, I think it's supposed to be, be glory forever. Amen. There are some typos in this version. Um, I've noticed that now that I'm reading it out loud, I think my brain corrects um, because I know some of these scriptures, but there are a couple of typos in this version. But that's the first two chapters. I'm going to go through the next two chapters next week. Um, just kind of talk about them. It's what I'm reading Wednesday. Um, we may try to move through three, three chapters because it's 17 chapters and it's relatively short. Uh, but thank you all for tuning in. I'm going to put this on my YouTube page shortly with all the comments. Thank you all for joining. No, thank you all for joining, man. I'm glad y'all did this. I'm trying to do some, some more things like this to help the body, um, you know, just to kind of see how, how I came through, uh, how I came to an understanding of some of these doctrines, who I read, what, is, what was formative for me, um, and then share some of the stuff that I'm still learning, um, you know, grow, trying to grow in this, in this grace that God has given me. Um, y'all have a great day. Grace and peace. And I'll see y'all on somebody else's scope. I will be trolling. Oh, go to go to my um, go to my Periscope profile, and I have the link to my YouTube page. So if you go to my Periscope profile, there's a link to my YouTube page. Subscribe to it if you wouldn't mind. Um, what I'm trying to do with my YouTube page, and I'll tell you all, as I am monetizing it because I'm going to be producing a lot of videos, and I want to produce them for free. And just to, the monetization will help me with some co the cost of the software and stuff like that. So uh, thank you all, you know, for tuning in and subscribing and uh, following my YouTube page because I'm going to be putting a lot of content out over the next few months and hopefully just kind of putting a lot more stuff out there. It's going to be software related stuff. All of it's going to be to the glory and honor of God. When I do my software stuff, it's going to be a lot of, you know, be teaching people how to write a Bible app, stuff like that. Um, you know, going to be doing the scripture memorization stuff. Once I finish it, I'm putting all of the, those videos on YouTube so people can walk through memorizing the book of Jude with me. So it's a lot of stuff. Yeah. So a lot of stuff that's going to be happening on my YouTube page. So join in the experience. Um, I'm finally getting this YouTube page where I wanted it to be. <clears throat> the whole purpose of it was to be Bible and tech merged. So finally it's happening. All right. Grace and peace, y'all. And I'll see y'all on the next one. Bye.